This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. This episode is brought to you by La Quinta by Wyndham. Your work can take you all over the place, like Texas. You've never been, but it's going to be great because you're staying at La Quinta by Wyndham. Their free bright side breakfast will give you energy for the day ahead. And after, you can unwind using their free high-speed Wi-Fi. Tonight, La Quinta. Tomorrow, you shine. Book your stay today at LQ.com. Hey, guys. Welcome to this week's podcast episode. And I've got a fantastic guest for you today, Greg DeVore. And he is the CEO of Screen Steps, which we are going to learn about more today. And for the audience out there, this is an entrepreneurship um, podcast episode where we talk about raising VC capital and uh, building a business, create creativity, and it's going to be all around wonderful fireside chat. So, uh, Greg, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. And um, so you have an interesting. You were in the music industry, and then now you've co found, you've, you're CEO of Screen Step. So talk about this journey. What led you to do it? And um, I, you know, it's really fascinating. Well, really, there was no master plan. Uh, <laughs> a lot of things happened by accident. The first is, you know, I went to the Berkeley College of Music. I majored in composition and film scoring, and worked in the film music industry uh, both in Boston and L.A. for a while. Uh, but back then. You know, health insurance in the U.S. was a little bit different, and my my first son was born very premature while we were on vacation. He was under two pounds. Hmm. Because of that, you know, he had some complications that continue to this day. And I was told, like, as long as you're a musician, an independent musician, nobody's going to give him health insurance. So it caused me to have to say, oh, I've got to change careers here because I've got to obviously have have health insurance for him. And so my brother and I, an opportunity presented itself, I, and we started a company together. And and initially, the primary thing was just to get health insurance, but it's uh it's grown into more than that since then. Yeah, it's it's quite interesting. And uh, you know, there's this you know this whole topic of uh, you know health insurance for um, creators and independents and self-employed. You know, it's kind of tied to a employment model, which needs a change, but. Uh, what I really love is, um, you know, what does, what is Screen Steps? What does it do? How can it benefit the listeners? Uh, I'm curious. Yeah. Well, if, you know, from what you've told me, a lot of your listener, listeners are running their own business. You know, a lot of times uh, you'll have a doctor's office and you, you didn't uh, sign up to be a business manager, but that's what you have to do, right? Or if you're an accountant or lawyers. Um, so what Screen Steps does is give you a way to prevent all of your staff from constantly asking you questions like, what's our policy on this? And how do I handle this invoice? And what's our process for this? You know, those business owners, they're bombarded by questions all day long. And sometimes it's hard for them to even get to their regular work. So what Screen Steps does is allows you to take the, the operational expertise. It's not going to turn somebody into a lawyer, right? It's not going to turn them into a doctor, but how does your medical billing system work? How does your you know appointments scheduling system work? All that sort of stuff, you can get it out of your head and in a format that your employees can find and follow on their own. And that when you get that level of independence for your employees, they're more confident and you are much less stressed. Yeah. It's uh it's really interesting. Um, cause uh <laughs> cause I, I run a couple of Airbnbs and it's like and it's like I kind of know the ins and outs of, and then, um, so there's like, it's like each guess. And I, I find myself repeating the same things over and, um, you know, sometimes you have com- miscommunications and it's, um, you know, I've, I've just been thinking like, how can I just remove myself and like, just like kind of focus more on like more important things. So, uh, it's really interesting how you, how you do that. So what do you do with West software or is it, um, like how do you how can how do you automate it so that you know employees can get up to speed and find it without just asking without you being the first line of defense? Well, really, there's two parts to it. So we have a framework for how you design this stuff, and then we have software that helps you do it. And the framework is called Find and Follow. 
And so we have a book on that. It's called Find and Follow. You can find it on Amazon. And it lays out a new way of looking at transferring knowledge to your employees. Because the first thing you think of when you're doing that is like, okay, well, I just need to train them better. And I just need to train them better. And we spend all this time in training, but we don't get the results we want because they forget what we taught them. You'll hear that all the time. Well, I told them how to do this, but <laughs> our, our memories aren't perfect. So yeah. what Find and Follow does is it gives you a different way of looking at that problem and a different approach, which is much more effective. You don't focus on teaching them a bunch of information. You focus on teaching them how to find and follow digital guides that you prepared. So you're teaching them to find the resources on their own instead of memorize everything you're saying. Uh -huh. And then our software helps you create those digital guides in a way. So it's not just like a wall of text or typical documentation. It's designed so they can find and follow it without needing the help of somebody else. So instead of like this giant document says, well, if this, then do that. And if it's this situation, remember this. And one time this might happen. It just says, ask some questions like, okay, is this, uh, are you trying to issue a refund or um, a credit to the account? Okay, it's a refund. Well, then do this. And what is, is this for someone who has insurance or they self-paid? Well, it was insurance. Okay, well, now you need to do this. And so it guides them through that process, no matter how complex it is. Yeah, I like, I like really I like that framework is, because, um, you know, kind of um, the, the model is if you like, you don't understand something, just go ask somebody versus, you know, try to be resourceful. So you're teaching them how to be resourceful and what yep. are resources. Yep. Um, and you're also putting responsibility on yourself to capture that information in a way that you don't have to clarify it later on. And that's what our tools help you do is, is capture it in a way and, 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 and present it in a way that they're not going to need to come and ask you for additional help. Yeah. I like that. And uh, so what, what type of uh, businesses um, sign up for a uh, screenplay? Is it, is it medical offices? Like a lot of the audience are, are dentists or um, doctors, or is it just um, other businesses? Uh, what kind of clients are signing up for the service? So we range the gambit. We, we have, you know, smaller offices up to large, uh, you know, multinational organizations. Uh, we really look at the team size and, and we specialize in those businesses that have a high level of complexity and a lot of change. Now we'll say, you know, with our small ones, so if we're looking at a medical office um, or something of that size, one of the key things for this to be successful is identifying someone on your team that's going to be that knowledge champion. And we, the knowledge champion is that person who's going to make sure that all the resources are there for people to find and follow on their own. They don't have to be the expert, but they're the one who's gonna make sure that, you know, if it's the doctor that knows everything, that we get that knowledge out of his or her head and with that we're, we're identifying the questions employees have. So if you identify that knowledge champion, then we can work with a small office all the way up to a large organization because that one person then is empowering everyone else. And, yeah, it's, it reminds me because uh, in the hospital, you know, we have, you know, it's almost like, to almost like sometimes it was like a week of just onboarding and all these um, protocols and processes and uh, there was what they call that what you're describing a knowledge champion somebody you could kind of um you know ask or um or that could refer you to the right resources um the next question i have is um you bootstrapped screen steps 20 years but then you've also taken vc funding and um you know what are some of the most challenging aspects of you know bootstrap versus venture capital well bootstrapping um you know you never you never get fired but you don't always get paid uh <laughs> you know so you know when you're bootstrapping <laughs> you uh um you have to be really resourceful you know you have to place kind of the bets very carefully. You can't, you know, spend a ton of money in one area and hope that maybe it'll work out. And so it just, there's, there's pros and cons to it. One, the pro is that it, it, it makes you be very deliberate about what you do. The con is that sometimes you see an opportunity and you don't have all the resources to really go after it. And what, what it really forced us to do is we found as we were bootstrapping, we weren't going to be able to compete just on technology alone. We really had to specialize. And that's when we built this framework and we just said, we're going to make every customer of ours successful because we're not just going to sell them technology. We're going to show them a better way to work. And that was fantastic. And once we saw that that, you know, every customer we applied that to was being successful, 
that's when it made sense then to take on investment because now we can grow that more quickly. We spent all those years bootstrapping, really trying to finalize and and design what is that 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 perfect formula for doing this. And now that we've taken on some investment, it allows us to move a little faster. It's always a challenge between you know um, you know bootstrapping VC, you know, and then you're also giving up some control. Here's another question I have for you: is um, you know um, what are you know, a lot of organizations, they train employees, big organizations. What are some of the assumptions that they, the big organizations get wrong about tra- training employees? The biggest assumption, two two big assumptions, right? One is that we need to focus on what the employees need to be able to know. And we don't want to focus on what they need to know. We need to focus on what they need to be able to do. Because at the end of the day, like the customer is asking a question or the patient's asking a question or they're being assigned a task We need to really understand what do they need to be able to do. The other assumption is that the more our employees memorize, the more capable they'll be. And that's actually not true. We can actually accomplish much more if we offload the operational knowledge into a system like screen steps that we can find and follow those guides when we need them. We become more adaptable to change. We're able to cross train much more quickly if we really gain that skill of what we call it is it's learning to follow a GPS instead of memorize a map. Interesting. Yeah. I like that. It's a, um, I love really like, love that, uh, framework that you have. Um, so kind of, uh, round, rounding it out, um, you know, you've got lessons from, uh, personal adversity, but, uh, one thing you talked about this is this whole area of change and um you know especially with software it's always changing and um you know especially with ai coming onto the scene how are you looking at ai how are you addressing it how are you incorporating it into um uh, your company well ai offers a lot of great opportunities especially for what we do So what's happening is people are very excited about AI. You know, if you've ever had, like if you're in an office and you have documentation and you upload it to like ChatGPT, all of a sudden you can start asking it questions and it gives you answers on that. All of that is contingent upon having a single source of truth for your business. And our framework really helps you do that. Identify that single source of truth. Then we're using AI to help then capture that from people. So I can, we're doing some internal tools right now where I can sit down with someone who knows how to do something instead of having them to type out a bunch of documentation that which may or may not be clear, I can just interview them, transcribe that recording, bring that through AI, and that's gonna create a guide that's very followable, that uh, is like a recipe that somebody can follow. On the other end, we're bringing AI into the side of when people search for stuff, AI enhanced results, so it's understanding what you want better, but also being able to just ask questions instead of just search for a document. And if you've got that single source of truth, which screen steps can help you create, then you can get really good answers back. What people are finding is if they don't have that single source of truth, AI can make things up and that can lead to problems. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's always a balance. And, um, you know, AI is going to be a tool in technology. Do you ever see, um, uh, you know, a lot of, I'm sure a lot of screen steps is um, human, you know, you got human, human, you ever see uh, where screen steps becomes like, uh, you know, kind of AI kind of taking over or kind of uh, coinciding with human responsibilities. And I I don't want to say replace or take over, but, um, you know, we're slowly everything, you know, AI kind of, you know, you you invest in AI as opposed to a a person. What we really look at is not so much as um, screen steps or AI will take over a person. What it's going to do is make that person much more productive. So for example, we worked with one, it was actually a medical scheduling uh, company. And after they adopt the find and follow framework and screen steps, their contact center became twice as productive as they were before. So before, you know, um, somebody in one shift would handle like 30 calls and afterwards they're handling 70 to 80. So when you bring in that technology, it's not so much that you're saying, Hey, this is going to replace your job, but we're going to take the people we have and make them much more productive so that when we're scaling up, we don't have to increase headcount quite as much. Um, and that saves a ton of costs for the business. So there may come a time where obviously there's technology that will replace jobs, but where we're really focused on is how do we amplify that person so they can do five, 10 times the work that they did before? 
Yeah, I love that. Uh, yeah, AI has really been able to, you know, increase in skill output, you know, especially um, in most businesses, and it can automate and the humans that learn how to use AI will really succeed. Um, rounding it out, you know, talk about, um, you know, lessons from uh, personal adversity and for future entrepreneurs, they want to start their own companies. How has your personal experiences shaped your business philosophy, your approach to resilience and adversity, especially in today's really um, um, unstable, very uh, volatile times? Yeah, well, you know, going back to why I started the business, uh, you know, it was really so I could have health insurance for my son, right? And so as I approached the business, I approached it differently. It wasn't like I couldn't afford to go out there and and go shoot really big and then end up with nothing, right? Or end up with nothing. You know, I had to make sure that he was taken care of. And so we approached the business a different way where we wanted to be forward thinking, but we also wanted to do it in a responsible way that we're not getting our head over our skis and putting ourselves in a place where, hey, if we don't get that next round of funding, we can't do anything. And that, you know, really forced us to build that business up block by block. And so, yeah, there, you know, there's plenty of success stories of someone who takes on a bunch of funding for a great idea and runs with it. But I do think there is value in having to go slowly and really, really understand the core, the, the core issue, the root cause of a problem and solve for that. So I would advise, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs will say this, don't fall in love with your solution, fall in love with the problem. And if you fall in love with that problem, then you can, and really understand it, then you can build something that's meaningful and makes a big impact on people and hopefully be financially successful for you, financially successful as well. Yeah, I love that, fall in love with your problem. Um, I've heard fall in love with your customer and um, I love that. How can people check out um, your company, uh, check out your website, your services, your products, and reach out to you? Yeah. So um, our company is screensteps.com. They can go there. If they're interested in learning more about uh, the Find and Follow framework, you can just uh, go to findandfollowbook.com. And my name is Greg DeVore. I'm on LinkedIn. You can find me there. Awesome. And for all the audience, let's thank Greg for coming on and be sure to check out all of his um, resources will be in the links and, um, you know, give him a like and follow on socials. And thanks so much. Thank you. It's great talking to you.